Australia has some of the best beaches in the world, and everybody loves going to the beach. But there's something on the beach called rip currents. Rips are something that every Australian and every overseas tourist should know about because there's something that can get you into trouble. I'm Dr. Rob Brander from the University of New South Wales, and I'm a surf scientist and surf lifesaver. During the summer months in Australia, on average, somebody drowns in a rip every two or three days, and most of the thousands of rescues that happen on our beaches are related to rips. Remember that it only takes about a minute to drown, so it's very important to be able to spot rips on your own. Now if you haven't noticed, I've been swimming between the flags, and that's where everybody should swim, because the lifesavers and the lifeguards put the flags in the safest part of the beach, away from the rips. And if you don't know what a rip is, if you swim between the flags, that takes a lot of the guesswork out of having to spot one. However, of the more than 11,000 beaches in Australia, only 3% are actually patrolled by surf lifesavers and lifeguards. And that means there's a lot of beaches and a lot of rips that you could easily get into trouble in. Well, what are rips? It's a really good question. And what we do is we throw purple dye, which is harmless, into the water. The dye goes wherever the water goes, and it's an easy way to spot the rip. Well, let me tell you what rips are not. They're not undertow. They won't pull you under because there's no such thing as an undertow. They're not rip tides because they're not a tide. They're a current. They flow pretty steady, and they won't take you to New Zealand. Basically, rips are strong, narrow currents that flow from the shoreline, through the surf zone, and offshore. They exist to take all the breaking water that's piling up on the beach back out to sea. All right, the best way to spot a rip is to look for dark gaps. Right behind me, we've got a nice rip. It looks like a dark gap, almost like a road or a path going through the surf. Now over here, it's a shallow sandbar. The waves are breaking. All that white water is piling up on the beach, it starts flowing along the beach in this deeper channel, and then turns the corner, and that's your rip. And that's what you look for, dark gaps. It's a pretty scary experience getting stuck in a rip, and there's definitely some do's and don'ts about how you should behave if you do find yourself caught in one. The main thing is not to panic. Don't panic, because the rip will not pull you under the water. All the rip will do will take you further out to sea, and it will sometimes bring you back. Remember that you've got air in your lungs, you float, you're very buoyant, so don't panic. The second thing to do is, if you're not a particularly good swimmer, put your hand up, straight up like that, signals for the lifeguards and the lifesavers to come and get you. What you could also do if you're a good swimmer is you could look around. And if you can see the sides of the rip, which is usually the shallower water where the waves are breaking, a lot of white water, swim towards that area. White water is good because it means it's shallow, you can maybe stand up, and also white water brings you back to the beach. What you should never do is swim against the rip. These things flow pretty fast and you'll just find yourselves going backwards, swimming faster, getting tired, and then you'll start to get scared. So just go with the flow, signal for the lifeguard, or let the rip take you around and get out of it yourself. One of the reasons that rips are dangerous is that they flow faster than people can swim, and sometimes they can flow faster than even Olympic swimmers. Rips are most dangerous because they actually look like the safest place to swim. A view from a headland is always a good way to spot a rip because you're up high and you're looking down at the beach and they're a lot easier to see. And often surfers and swimmers will check out the beach for rips before they go down in the water. Not all rips are the same. The most common type is what we call a fixed rip. And fixed rips are stuck between sandbars and they might stay in the same place for days, weeks, and even months. Another type of rip is a flash rip. And flash rips form when waves are really big or really messy and all of a sudden the water piles up and pushes out the back of the surf. Well, we've just had an example of a flash rip where all of a sudden the rip is pulsed out. Where those surfers are, you can see the, the chopped up, messy white water that's just gone out and then it's just stopped. And that's one, one common thing about these flash rips is that they can suddenly occur anywhere where there's suddenly been a large group of waves breaking and it pushes the rip out and then it disappears. Finally, we get something called a permanent rip or a headland rip. And these are rips that are pushed against the headland and they're there almost all the time. So it's another good reason to always be careful when you're swimming close to headlands and rocks. If there's no lifeguards or flags on a beach, the simple rule is don't go in. If you do go in, Make sure you're an experienced swimmer or surfer, make sure you're always with somebody, and make sure you know how to spot rips. 